Now, back to the bees. Nathan Clark manages beehives all over Madison. He showed reporter Julia Chekvala one of his hives and talked about his company, Mad Urban Bees, as well as about Madison's new beekeeping ordinance. Okay, there's the queen. See the one with the uh, yellow dot? Mm Mm-hmm. That's the queen. So that one queen moves throughout the Mm -hmm. hive laying eggs. Yep, she will lay sometimes up to 2,000, around 2,000 eggs a day. So all of these little capped things, those are brood. So they are the worker bees that have the little pupas have gotten to a stage where they are then going to emerge and be full on full on worker bees. Um, see this little guy's carrying these little yellow sacks on his legs, that's pollen. The smoke makes them think of forest fires, and so therefore they go down into the hive and start even eating a little bit of honey just in case the hive does set on fire, they can leave en masse and start a new hive elsewhere. Do you think that urban beekeeping can help overall honeybee populations? I think it can in a number of ways. One, just keeping those populations alive. And, but the main thing that I think it can do is keep the awareness of bees with people as part of the community. I mean, when you know that your neighbor has bees and that they produce honey and that they don't bother you, you understand the benefit of those insects, the fact that your garden gets pollinated. I had people come to me last year saying that they hand-pollinated their cucumbers or their tomatoes because there weren't enough pollinators around. And this is a situation where if you've, you're you taking care of bees, you're going to treat your yard differently. You're not going to use as many pesticides or insecticides. And when you don't do that, you also help out the native pollinators as well. So what I am doing is I am providing bee management around the city of Madison. So there's a lot of people in Madison that want to have bees and that don't either have the knowledge, the the funds, or the time in order to, take, to properly take care of bees. So I am supplying hives. I am supplying time and um, equipment to, to manage the bees on these properties. So the homeowners um, have the bees on their, their property, and I'm kind of paying rent, as you could say, with honey for uh, keeping my bees on their property. And you said you have 30... Hives Thirty, and I'm hoping for fifty by the end of by the end of June. They're pollinating everything they find, so yeah. um, they go two miles to find food. So would they still be vulnerable to some of the causes of colony collapse disorder? A lot of the systemic pesticides that are the cause of colony colony collapse are not used on your lawn. You're not using a systemic pesticide. You're using something that goes in and just attacks things once and then is done. And a lot, of, a lot of what we use are not really insecticides. Mostly we use um, herbicides. So if people are spraying their lawns for dandelions or creeping charlie or that sort of thing, that means that flowers won't grow there. So those, the bees won't be exposed because there's no blooms. There's nothing for them to eat. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I want to try to showcase with mad urban bees is actually extract honey at multiple times of the year because just as the flowers change throughout the year, so does the flavor of the honey. So the honey in early spring can almost be a, like a pale gold, while the honey in fall will be, look more like a dark amber to even uh, almost the color of Coca-Cola. Can you tell me how the, the new Madison Bee Ordinance has changed beekeeping in the city? For one thing, it has given legitimacy to beekeeping in Madison. I mean, before that, you could keep bees, if, but if there were any issues you were going to be on the, probably on the losing side of things. Because, you know, if you have a neighbor that's got upset, most likely you'd be asked to remove your beehives. The ordinance that the city passed, it's probably the most progressive law in the country for beekeeping. Reason being is it lets you keep bees only three feet from the property line, which means you can, you know, if you've got a fenced-in backyard, you can put that beehive Right up in that back corner where it's not going to bother your neighbors, you can still use your yard, you can still garden, you can still have your kids and your dog out, and it's not an issue. The other thing that it really does is it gives a little bit more of a structure to how many beehives you can have. I mean, you can have up to six. I'm perfectly happy with just two beehives in my yard. 
what I'm doing around the city is placing two beehives per property. That was Nathan Clark with Mad Urban Bees. To find out more, you can go to madurbanbees.com.